you know, I really have the opinion that golf club design, well, it's really starting to evolve right now. Or is it just the case of golfers' opinions is starting to change a little? Either way, this is another set of golf clubs. Well, that really can possibly change the game considerably. And when I say considerably and change, I mean make it a damn sight easier. And when I say about golfers' opinions changing, I'm probably referring to mentalities of golfers because, well, older golfers, let's say, they think that golf clubs should look a particular way. You know, the traditional type. A P7 MB, a classic blade, that's how your iron should look. Or should they? Are we all starting to tire of our relentless pursuit to get the best looking clubs in our golf bags and not necessarily the best performing? And compromising the way a product looks is one of the things, first of all, you're gonna to have to overcome if you wanna make this game as easy as it possibly could be. Let me introduce you to a new iron in this Stealth lineup of 2023 it is the new Stealth HD. Maybe I should turn it that way so you can get a better idea of what this thing looks like. It is very, very different from anything we've seen, certainly from TaylorMade, not necessarily unique in its makeup in terms of what we've seen of late, but it is a very, very different looking club. It has a huge amount of benefits to a lot of golfers. The first question is, why does this thing look so weird and how can it make the game any easier for me? Now clearly this style of club is not new to the marketplace. It's new to TaylorMade's lineup, but we have seen this kind of development in irons of late. But those kind of clubs are not the coolest of looking clubs in my opinion. And I think what Taylor made have done is the exact opposite. They've made a golf club that is uh, perhaps has a little bit of stigma attached to it, look extremely cool in the bag. And from a de design perspective, they've also done one other thing that makes these really interesting in their full stealth lineup. And that is align them with these things. And that is the standard stealth iron that currently exists in the range, hugely popular. And as you can see, when you put these two things side by side, in terms of a design perspective, they sit seamlessly in your bag. So that gives you a number of options, which are quite obvious, I assume, but I'll state it for you. You keep your shorter end of the bag with a traditional type of iron, if that's what you please. And then you stick this kind of thing in at the top end, where you might need a little bit more help and assistance. But in all honesty, the idea that you have the option to do both is absolutely perfect, but staying a full bag of HDs is also a perfectly good scenario because these are very much a blended set and look very different from a five iron compared to what it does in the short end of the bag at the pitching wedge. So let's take a look at those. So the obvious negative when you look at a set of clubs like this is sometimes that the big bulbous sort of uh, game improvement, super game improvement iron look can be really appealing at that top end of the bag. And then we get a little bit, uh, want a little bit more refinement at that short end of the bag. And I've got a five iron and a nine iron here for comparison. And when you look at them from the top side, you'll see there's a considerable difference. The five iron, you see that bulbous back and then gradually these are sort of faded down in scale down, if you like, in size and what you see at the back end down to the nine iron and then into the pitching wedge you'll start to see less and less of that bulbous back. And it becomes a game improvement iron, something that we're more familiar with and seeing at address. So for me, that is key in terms of this design element as well. Mentally, you've got the bulk and mass that helps you with the five iron, and then it's getting a little bit more finesse, a little bit more refinement in that shorter end of the bag, which you certainly need, but you're still not forgiving the um, element of, uh, of forgiveness that you're still gonna get in those short clubs as well. So really good in terms of visually what they've done here, TaylorMade. The question is, how do they perform? And why do I keep rabbing on about these being able to make the game a whole lot easier for many average golfers? Well, take a look at these numbers. Now I've got a five, I've got a seven, and I've got a nine iron. I'll collect some data on each, but there is one other thing I wanna pay reference to before we start collecting data. And that's the fact that 
I said these things are a little bit odd in terms of different from the norm, far from traditional. But the way these have been designed, they're almost so different that it's not like anything that I've seen before and I'm not put off by these at address at all. This is a pitching wedge, which like I said, to me, looks like a super game improvement and in the fact that we've got that big, thick top line. Wouldn't be my choice to play, but then when you hit a shot like that, which is extremely mass heavy and the ball still pops up there, there's a little bit more encouragement, but that's a lot, lot better strike. And that's another key point to mention, is that this type of iron would normally come with a few, um, well, let's say you've got to make allowances for certain things that you're going to lose. One of the major things being sound and feel. They've done an incredibly good job of making these sound and feel really, really good. And if you hit, hopefully you pick the sound of that, of a real good crisp strike. Again, ball flight is really good, which I'll talk about very, very soon. But if you hit the Stealth Iron alongside the Stealth HD, you would be expecting, or at least I would, from that big, huge difference in terms of profile, I suppose, a totally different sound acoustically and in terms of feel. Well, let me tell you, there isn't one at all. These sound and feel really, really good, which was something they did so well with those Stealth Irons, and again, Hopefully you're picking these up in terms of the sound. Cannot fault it. But it is now time to look at that performance because the reason that you're going to be persuaded to try this type of club is because of its performance. So first of all, you've got to buy into the looks and I think they've done a real good job of doing, persuading you to give these things, this style of club, a try. But then when you see this performance, that's the thing that's going to tip you over the edge and start you questioning your attitude towards traditional and what you know and what you're used to. Right, we'll go lucky dip, what we start with. It is in fact a five iron, so arguably the kind of, well it'd be the toughest club out of the uh, selection, the longest iron in the bag, and certainly where I'd be expecting to get the most help and assistance from, where I'd be needing it if you like. So like I said, first of all, that kind of bulk gives me that confidence. It sort of suggests to me that I'm gonna get a bit of help. Let's see what this thing does in terms of data. But you know what? Not the best of strikes in terms of a bit of map before ball, but yet again, that still gets really high and out there. That's the bit that shocks me. 21.2 degrees launch angle on a five iron. Trust me, that's a high launching ball, especially when you get mat first. 4,000 spin, so compare that to your five iron, or my regular five iron, spin number's perfectly fine. Uh, descent angle of 47.4 just shows again, that's coming down at a real good angle as well. 36 feet peak height, 178 carry. That's, I mean, that's optimum numbers that I would get with any five iron I have tried. <clears throat> Just put that into some kind of perspective. So irrelevant of what type or style of club this is, that's as good a set of data as I would achieve with any other iron. Okay? And this is a super game improvement iron, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, I haven't had a look, I assume, yeah. This is a seven iron. Let's see what the seven iron does next and see if we can put a bit of a better clip on it. Yeah, that's much better. That's a solid strike, <coughs> bullet straight. <coughs> um, 24.2 degrees launch angle. That's the key thing that stands out a mile with both these clubs, comparing them to what I would normally do. So 24.2 degrees launch angle. My normal seven iron would launch around 21 degrees, maybe 20 degrees. That's the difference in ball flight. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's huge. I mean, especially when you're talking about club head speed and being able to generate enough of it to get that ball airborne, which is certainly where this club is aimed at, then without doubt, this larger head shape with the ability to move that CG way back is helping massively in terms of launch angle. 
So 24.2 degrees, five and a half thousand spin in terms of rev, 37 peak height and a 154 carry. Now I'm gonna say exactly what I've just said with the five iron, that's optimum numbers. That's as good of a performance in terms of data criteria that I would reach with any other seven iron I've tested. It's quite unreal really, or surreal, uh, to read those kind of numbers from a club's performance, this style of club. I just, uh, it blows my mind a little. So clearly we've got nine iron left. Now this is where, like I said, you don't see any of that back end becomes a lot neater, even though that top line is still very, very thick. Right, Let's see if we can finish with a nice one. Oh yeah. I mean, again, just a real good feel, which is the other shocking thing, really. Really good feel. Let's see what it does in terms of data. So we've got a launch angle of 28 degrees. If I'm honest with you, I don't know what my launch angle would be on a standard 9-iron. All I can tell you is that ball is going very much upwards. 7,000 revs of spin. Again, more than happy enough with that spin number. Anybody who watches the channel will tell you that my spin number is never that high, but 7,000 revs on a 9-iron is okay with me. 32 in terms of peak height and a 124 carry. It's probably a little bit shorter, if anything, than my normal 9-iron would carry. I'm more in that sort of 135 category. We've only hit one ball, but it felt really good. It was a nice, easy swing, but arguably a little drop off there in terms of what I would say in terms of optimum numbers that I achieved with the seven and the five. That's just three shots, three consecutive shots. Trust me, these things do, they're very repeatable. They are very consistent. They do things that they're supposed to do and they do them extremely well. I can't tell you how impressed I am by these new Stealth HD irons. Now I started this video by saying that I think opinions, attitudes, designs are all changing. And I think that is probably the case. And if they haven't done already, then I think the minute you try these HD irons, then they certainly will, because any negativity you may have had, preconceived ideas you may have to this kind of style of iron with that kind of wide sole, super big top line, odd shape in terms of its height, everything about these is just a little bit weird push those preconceived ideas out the window for a little bit and give these a go. And my bet is that you'll be as impressed as I am and maybe as surprised as I am as to just how good these things are. There's a lot of clubs released in the last year that I feel have made the golf game of golf that little bit easier. I would add those to the list. And certainly if you want a little bit of help with your game, particularly your irons in this case, and uh, you're thinking of changing this year, then I wouldn't dismiss these. I would certainly be giving them a go and just compare them to what you're using currently and what other options are out there. And I reckon these might be quite favorable. Right, I really enjoyed those, as you can probably tell. Thank you for watching. I've said at the end of every video, there's lots more to come because it's an absolute bombardment of new product right now. So uh, no doubt I'll be seeing you hopefully tomorrow night. So thanks for watching this one and I'll see you soon.